Hello, everyone. This is Jonathan Little, and I'm here today with the 80th episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I want to thank all of you for making it to week 80. If you have not watched or listened to the past podcast, be sure to check them out on my site, jonathanlittlepoker.com, because they're all there under the podcast tab. So today we have a hand from a 5,000 euro turbo event I recently played. The next few hands are going to deal with me being a little bit overly aggressive. So let's check these out and see how bad I can screw these hands up. <laughs> All right, so a tight aggressive kid raises to 525 out of his 50,000 chip stack. We are very deep stacked early in this tournament. We're playing 100, 200 with 50,000 chip stacks. And I have king three of clubs in the small blind. Uh, they fold to me, and I like to re-raise to 1,700. Uh, this is a play that I think is perfectly fine. Uh, with hands like King-3 suited, you do not want to be calling from out of position, at least from the small blind. That's going to lead to very bad spots after the flop. So in this scenario, the only way to profitably play this hand is to 3-bet. Of course, you could just fold. There's nothing wrong with folding. Um, but early in tournaments, you'll find that making these bluffs is relatively cheap in proportion to your stack. Like right here, if I if things go horribly wrong, I may lose 10,000 chips. That would be about as bad as this hand could go unless I flop the the second nut flush against the nut flush. So um, usually this is going to result in me winning the pot preflop and also making the tight aggressive kid really become tight aggressive. Or it's going to result in my opponents recognizing that I'm the guy not to mess with. So either way, we establish a good aggressive image that's going to hopefully make our opponents not mess around with me. So I like this. And then, after I make it 1700, a good kid in the big blind re-raises to 4200. Okay, so now, when he re-raises, I have to ask myself, is he bluffing? He certainly knows I'm capable of 3-betting with a wide range from the small blind, and... Most good players are often searching for a spot to make an aggressive play early in a tournament. And the reason for that is because they want to establish an aggressive image like I'm not the guy to mess with. Because if you're not the guy to mess with, people will fold to you more in late position, let you steal more blinds, etc., etc. So is this player trying to establish the same image dominance, I guess is the proper term? And I don't know. So the tight aggressive kid folds, as he's going to fold everything. And I think folding here is perfectly fine once it folds back to me. We only have king three suited. But I decided to really get after it and make it 11,150, leaving myself a 38,825 chip stack. So at this point, what I've effectively done is I've forced my opponent to either go all in or fold. He could call. And I actually think calling with a hand like aces would be pretty sweet right here. Or maybe even kings, maybe even queens. Um, but hands like ace, king, jacks, tens, etc. He's in a rough spot, right? Because if he shoves and I call, he's going to be in horrible shape with m most of those hands. Um, I mean, like my value range in this scenario is going to be exactly aces and kings and queens and maybe ace, king. And then I'm going to have some bluffs. And I elected to use this hand as a bluff because it has a king blocker. I would also consider doing this with some of the ace X hands. I guess I should make this clear. I'm not making this play every time. A lot of players think that you just do the same thing in every spot every single time. And I think that's definitely not how poker works. Um, you definitely have to vary your play based on your opponent, based on your image, based on um, the image you're trying to develop. Also, your hand is very relevant. Um, having the king or the ace blocker gives me an incentive to make the four bet. So I do make the 4-bet, and my opponent pretty much instantly went all in. Not really what I want to see happen. So now, it seems like every time I post a hand like this, everyone asks, assuming I'm making this, these live, these hand replays live, oh, so now do you call? And the answer is no, you don't call. We are absolutely crushed by this guy's range. This guy is going to show up with probably, if I had to guess, ace-king or maybe something like kings or queens or jacks. And against that range, king-three suit is in horrible shape, so we have an easy fold. And a lot of people really, really, really despise bluffing off chips. Because you just have no equity now, right? I have to fold. We're giving this guy 11,000 chips, which is sixty big or 55 big blinds, which is a lot of money. But you have to recognize that it is okay. If you only have value hands in your range, 
your opponents can play very well against you. And especially as you move up, if you want to become a high stakes poker player, you just must have bluffs in your ranges, assuming you want to be anywhere near balanced. And of course, balance is, uh, balance is overrated for the most part. Um, the way you win is by becoming incredibly imbalanced. And in this spot, I probably thought that my opponent was getting well out of line. That is the, the only reason I would do this. If I thought my opponent just had only nut hands, of course I would fold, right? But I assumed he was probably getting out of line as well. And so I decided to do something about it. Of course, my opponent could have decided I was just going to four bet so he can jam all in, or five bet so he can jam all in no problem with his entire range. But I kind of doubt that's what is happening here. You'll find that most people have a point in the hand where they play honestly. And usually, when guys are putting in 250 big blinds preflop, it's pretty honest. So that's going to be it for this hand. In the next few episodes, we will be showing you a few more plays that were perhaps a little bit overly aggressive. The other ones, I think, worked out a little bit better for me. Um, so be sure to come back next week. If you guys like this podcast, please leave a review or like it wherever you watch it. If you're watching it on my website, jonathanlillepoker.com, thank you for being there. Be sure to check out all of the other free bonuses and free content I have for you on the site. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave a review and um, give, give us a rating. And if you're watching on YouTube, please also like it and let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you all very much for being here. I appreciate it. I will be back next week with another episode of Weekly Poker Hand.